uh, both as a journalist, but also someone who's worked for many years in uh, what we call needs-based information. That is information that can be used by uh, the so-called beneficiaries, by people, crisis-affected populations. Um, I, I, I think this is one of the greatest concerns. Um, I think there has been an improvement in the way uh, refugees or crisis-affected populations are informed, but we have, still haven't got there yet. Um, I often have the impression that um, the way the humanitarian operations operate, whether they are uh, you know, the UN agencies or NGOs, it's often very much a sort of a, a neo-colonial approach with the sense that we know what's good for you, but there is really not enough input from the so-called beneficiaries themselves. I think people need information wherever they are, whether it's you know uh, refugees uh, in the surrounding countries of, of Syria or in Somalia, Horn of Africa, and so on. I think they need information which enables them to make informed decisions about their own predicament and about the future. However, information often is relegated to a background, a uh, back burner position. Uh, because food, shelter, and so on is considered more important. In fact, in a crisis, I think the most important thing in the beginning is the need for reliable and credible information. This, I think, is simply not happening yet. And I do think it's, uh, I mean, whenever budgets are cut, it's usually the information that is one of the first to go. I think information, uh, the needs-based information, needs to receive a far greater priority. And secondly, also, there has to be far more input from the donors and the humanitarian organizations toward helping uh, quality mainstream media cover more efficiently these crises. Because as we all know, the quality of international reporting is going down. And I think the only ones really capable of providing the monitoring uh, for accountability and transparency that is needed are informed media. I don't think it's being done by organizations which uh, theoretically monitor the actions of humanitarian organizations because they operate much too slowly. It needs to go much faster and this is where informed media can actually play a far greater and more significant role. I think among the principal challenges facing humanitarian organizations today is that there has to be, in a sense, a rethinking of the way things are done, i.e. relief organizations need to start thinking about the future the moment they hit the ground running. Uh, there has to be far more uh, emerging, I think, of humanitarian response with longer-term development, as well as uh, getting people to think about peace and reconciliation, uh, if, it's a, if it's a conflict, for example, um, mainly because these are crucial issues. And my impression is that aid agencies dealing only in humanitarian response do not think about these issues enough. I mean, nothing has really changed that much. They're operating in much the same way as before. And, uh, you know, whoever you are, whether a refugee or whether you're uh, stuck on the ground um, in, a, in a, a civil conflict, you need to also, as, as, a, as a beneficiary, what's crucial is what's going to happen later. And simply providing food, shelter, medical relief, that's fine, that's necessary. But at the same time, there has to be more constructive thinking as to how are we going to extricate ourselves from this um, crisis. And furthermore, um, obviously the, the, the age-old problem again of political um, agendas uh, misusing and abusing humanitarian response simply because governments are unwilling or unable to take and make the decisions needed to provide a, a, a political solution perhaps to a crisis or um, perhaps uh, deal with a, with a crisis, a disaster, uh, more efficiently with regard to the long term. Well, perhaps uh, the UN, the United Nations agencies, will need to change uh, if they wish to survive. And that means they need to start looking at what are their mandates. Uh, they need to realize that uh, perhaps the most effective approach uh, should be contracted out by outside organizations um, the UN agencies really should act more as secretariats, become much smaller, become much more efficient, and also um, they, they are needed, in a sense, to help coordinate the NGOs on the ground. But, I mean, there really has to be a, 
a whole re-look at what is the role of the UN agencies when it comes uh, to humanitarian response, but also what is the role of the NGOs and the need to really, once and for all, have more coordination uh, amongst themselves. Uh, I mean, I, I see this again and again. Too, too many organizations are concerned too much by themselves as opposed to the issues at hand. So I, I think we're going to look at a much different uh, landscape because in many ways the humanitarian organizations cannot just go on plodding along as before, doing the same thing as before. They have to become much more imaginative. They have to become much more transparent and also uh, explain more where the funding is going and explain more who is doing it right. And if there are organizations that are wasting funding, they should be kicked out of the game. I think the Sphere project, I think it got, on, it got off very well. Uh, my, my initial criticism of it was that there was very little about actual uh, media in it, uh, but I think it has been you know, uh, absorbed perhaps in, 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 into different sections. I think the Sphere uh, project actually has the opportunity to uh, setting these examples, but I think perhaps it needs to become much more outspoken than it is. Uh, I'm not sure if that's possible, but I think, you know, if Sphere is going to try and pull these things together, then it needs to be outspoken, it needs to be much more honest, and uh, also it needs to also help create this bridge between the operations on the ground of the different agencies, whether the UN agencies or the NGOs, and the public itself. So I, 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 I see Sphere perhaps uh, contributing much more to helping to explain what exactly are humanitarian operations? How, too, should governments and donors uh, become involved to actually making uh, decisions which will lead toward uh, perhaps uh, more politically satis satisfying outcomes of conflict, post-conflict situations? And also, ex extremely important, looking at the long term, meaning there has to be this merging of humanitarian with development. We're looking at climate change. We're looking at a lot of aspects which cannot be resolved simply by Band-Aid uh, response. And this is perhaps where Sphere can, by, by highlighting such issues and by trying to come to grips with them, can actually play a far more significant role.